How's it going, everybody? My name is Absalom, and welcome to part two of my all collectibles series for The Last of Us 2. In this video, I'll be covering all the collectibles for Seattle Day 1, which is chapter two. Now, before I get started, I just wanna say that this chapter has a ton of collectibles. There's 87 things in total that you have to pick up, so this video will be a little bit longer than normal. I'm gonna try to be as efficient as I can be to save you guys as much time as possible. So let's get started with the first subchapter, which is the gate, which has 11 collectibles. First up is a trading card, and it's located on the inside of the bus stop wall right at the beginning of the mission. Next up is another trading card, and once you make it to the highway or the Interstate 5, you'll be able to see this trailer on the left side. Go inside and you'll see this trading card on the bulletin board. The next one is an artifact, so it's in the same trailer as the previous one, and it's in the next room over. So open up this drawer and you'll find a map, which is going to be crucial for the storyline. If you don't grab it here, you can pick it up later on in the game. The next up is another artifact, so follow the highway until you run into the main gate. At that point, turn left and there's a trailer on the left and it'll be located on the desk. The next one is another artifact, just like before, and it's actually pretty much the exact same thing. So just go to the next building over and it's actually in the same exact spot, so you'll find it right here on the same desk. The next collectible is our first journal entry, so once you pick up that one, head over to the main gate and all you have to do is just look at the main gate and interact with it and you'll actually take your first journal entry. Alright, so once you solve the obstacle course, which is the main gate, make your way down the bridge and there's a tower over here with a ladder that goes down, but before you do that, there's a ladder directly to your left, so climb that and the next collectible, which is trading card number three, will be up here on the desk. Once you grab that, the next one, which is artifact number four, is right to your right, and it's going to be on this cargo crate. Alright, moving on to the next one, which is artifact number five. Make your way down that ladder, and then there's this trailer to your left. After you break out the glass, it'll be located in this little drawer right here, right before the exit. So this next one's a little bit tricky, and it's for the next trading card. So you need to take the extension cord that's hooked up to that generator, and before you chuck it over the wall, you want to chuck it over the trailer and then climb up on the backside right here, where you'll be able to find the trading card on top of the skylight uh, right here. Now for the last collectible of the subchapter artifact number six, it is directly beside that previous one, and it's located in this little folding chair. Alright, now let's get into the next subchapter, which is downtown, and this one has a whopping 31 collectible items, so let's get started with the first one, which is an artifact located in this booth at the very beginning of the mission. You'll open up this drawer and it'll be right there. Okay, so now for the open world area of the map, I'm going to mark it on the map each time, but I'm in the bottom left corner of the map in the bank. You're going to want to make your way into the vault room over here, and the first artifact is on the ground right here. I do want to mention that in this open world area of the map, you can do these collectibles in any order you'd like. However, after doing this multiple times, I found a pretty efficient route, so I'm going to show you guys the route that I like to go to collect all these items. Okay, so now moving on to the next item, which is safe number one, and this is the bank vault itself. So the combination is 602306. Once you open that up, you'll be able to get the next few collectibles. So the next thing I want to show you is the shotgun that's in this guy's hands right here after you open up the vault. Now this is not actually a collectible, however it will be useful for one of the trophies in the game, and so I just felt like showing you. Alright, moving on, the next collectible is artifact number 3, and it's directly to the right of the shotgun on this table right here. The next artifact is in the back right corner, and it's going to be in the safety deposit box over here. This will count as a collectible as well as unlocking a trophy, and you might recognize it from Uncharted. But if you don't, hey, it's from Uncharted. All right, now you want to make your way out of the bank entirely and then make your way to the middle of the giant open area. At this point, you're going to notice a rubble structure or a building that used to be, and now you're going to make your way to the very top by solving the super difficult, really not that hard puzzle, and there's going to be a trading card at the very top. All right, moving just slightly north into the water, it's the only river in the entire area, so it shouldn't be too hard. But once you see this truck with fascists written on it, open up the back, the artifact will be laying here in the middle. Now if you leave that truck and go directly above it where the bridge kind of overhangs that little water area, you're going to see another purse on the ground where you can pick up artifact number 6. Alright, now you're going to make your way to the courthouse, which is probably the first area you're going to go for the storyline path of this area. But once you make your way to the very bottom floor, you're going to see a body here in the right corner of this room, and you'll see the artifact laying on top of him. After that, you want to make your way over to the room to your left, and you'll see a body here on the right side with the machete. Once you pull out the machete, he'll fall over and drop the next artifact. For the next collectible, it's another artifact, and it's actually directly to the left of you, and it's on the bottom drawer of this filing cabinet. 
Next up is safe number two, and the combination is 860722. Now you'll get the uh, clue on that whiteboard back there where the other two artifacts are. So once you input that, you'll be able to move on to the next collectible. Now for those of you that pre-ordered the game, you won't have to worry about this, but in case you didn't or you just don't have it active, then the first training manual will be found on this bookshelf right here. Alright, now we're done with the courthouse and it's actually going to dump you out right in front of Roostin's coffee shop, so if you break out the window, you'll find the next artifact on the counter right here. Now if you just walk to the left of that bar area, you're going to go to the espresso machine that's behind the counter and you'll find the next trading card right here in this drawer. The next collectible, which is Artifact 11, can be found in the bathroom at the back of the Roostin's coffee shop. You'll have to kill one zombie in order to get into this room. This collectible also serves as the key in order to unlock Barco's. After leaving Roostin's, you can find your way over here to Madison Street, where there's going to be a west gate and a safe is located right here. Now it also doubles as another collectible because there is a trading card inside of this safe. So the safe combination is 0451. If you don't remember this, then you can access your documents where you picked up the collectible from earlier that has all of the gate codes. Now if you follow Madison Street back towards the courthouse direction, you're going to see a staircase on your right. If you go up to the top of the staircase, there's going to be another purse that is at the very top of the stairs and that'll have the next artifact. Alright, moving on, there's a bridge that's near the intersection of Madison and 5th Avenue, and if you go over here to the right tower and open up that drawer, there's the next artifact. After you put away that artifact, there is going to be a journal entry icon that will pop up in that little window where you see Nelly, or as Naughty Dog likes to call her, Shimmer the Horse, and you'll be able to collect your next journal entry. Alright, if you back up and head to the right and go to the end of the bridge, there is going to be a white tent here on the left. If you go to the back right corner, you'll see the next collectible, which is the workbench. There's also an unofficial collectible in this white tent that is from the first game, so I'll let you figure that one out and collect it for yourself. Now if you head back across that bridge you were previously on and you'll see a window that is in the side of a building, if you drop down you'll find this music store and if you go to the bottom floor there is a trading card collectible in this bottom drawer. Now if you head back out to that giant open area in the map where Marion and 6th Avenue intersect, you'll see the building that is Barco's and it's going to be the one right beside the courthouse. So you'll use that key that you collected from earlier to open it up and then when you head upstairs inside of a printer there is going to be artifact number 14. Now if you head over to the synagogue, which is located between Marion and Columbia Street, you're going to get the gas first and then push a cart over and you'll be able to climb up and collect the next artifact. Now there's going to be a rope that you'll have to swing across and go into this office, but when you do, there's going to be an artifact you'll get inside of this drawer, but when you pick up the artifact, it'll also trigger a journal event. So you won't have to do anything to collect the journal, but you do have to collect the artifact. Now moving on to the final artifact of the open world area, it's between Cherry and Columbia Street just north of the bank. Now once you see this tank, go up to the stairs and you'll see a body, and the artifact is inside of this purse. Now I do want to mention that if you've missed any of these collectibles up until this point, make sure that you get them now because once you proceed, you won't be able to go back. However, if you're ready to move on and you've opened up the east gate and you've cleared the hotel, now you want to make your way up to the second floor of the hotel and then you'll find the artifact inside of that dresser. Well, I didn't think I'd be saying it, but here's the last collectible for the downtown submission, which is the trading card located in the nightstand directly behind the previous collectible. And now that we're done with downtown, let's move into the next submission, which is Eastbrook Elementary. Now, this is a very short submission, which I think we earned it after the downtown submission, but the first two collectibles are actually uh, automatic and you don't have to do anything at all. All you have to do is just watch the cutscene and Ellie actually picks up this letter and the Polaroid, and both of those end up counting for uh, artifact number one and two. So, with that being out of the way, let's move on to the next collectible that you actually do have to pick up. Alright, after clearing a few floors, you'll end up on this rooftop with all these solar panels. Once you clear out the enemies, make your way to this back room over here, and you'll see a radio, and next to that is another artifact, which you'll be able to interact with. And at the very end of the submission, there's an apartment that you'll be able to jump across. You actually have to do it for the storyline path. And once you make it into this apartment, then make your way to the back right of this apartment. Inside of the bedroom, there's the nightstand, and you'll find the last collectible, which is a trading card inside of that drawer. Alright, now our next mission is Capitol Hill, and you might have heard of this place in the news lately if you've been paying attention to that, so let's get straight into it with all 18 different collectibles. If you head to the building number 3, it's the big blue building, and go into the living room, inside of this drawer right here you'll find the first trading card. After that, if you head just south of that, you'll see another building. You'll have to climb in this window and then follow this bloody staircase, kill a zombie, and then inside of the back bedroom 
On top of the bed, you'll find the next artifact. The next collectible is trading card number two, so you want to make your way to the inn, it's pretty easy to spot, and then head to this back alley over here and hop in the first window that you're actually able to, and then on the floor right here beside the TV is the next uh, trading card. Now looking at the inn right there, if you turn around and hop up this ledge, and then inside this kitchen there is an artifact inside of this drawer. Now I also want to call attention that it's not a collectible, but you can pick up the uh, trip mine uh, up in here in the back bedroom on top of this bed, uh, right here where these newspapers are. You don't need to, but you will if you want to get the trophy. Alright, you'll push up a little bit further in the mission and you'll see a gas station right here. So if you go into this garage door, you'll actually find the first workbench right here on the right. Now a little heads up is that there's a bunch of enemies that are actually on their way towards you. So if you find it, don't, don't necessarily unlock it right away, just kill all the enemies and then come back. Now across the street there's a coffee shop and a bookstore so you're going to want to pick up the next artifact over here by the sink. There's also a training manual in this room. If you haven't pre-ordered the game you should, uh, you should be able to pick that up as well. Alright, in the same area in this back room there is the next trading card so once you clear out all the zombies over here on this uh, cargo crate over here with the record player there is the next trading card. Now when you get to the basketball court you can drop down into this building for the next trading card. However, when you do that there is a bunch of enemies that are going to start uh, heading your way with zombies and people and everything so you need to clear out all of those before you actually have time to loot this building. But the trading card is in that locker once you've cleared them all out. Now you'll progress to the area where there's a bunch of trip mines. Ellie and Dina will make it very clear that there's a bunch of trip mines and you've deserved a break to go to the liquor store so you can deal with your problems in the apocalyptic world, but there's no liquor so instead there's a trading card on this shelf. Once you leave that area there's a tower on your right and you'll find the artifact at the very top on the desk that I think was left behind by like Picasso or, or maybe Michelangelo or, or just one of those famous artists. I think that's, I think that's what this is. I'm not sure though. Now once you make your way down to the uh, bottom of the tower and you cross that river pretty gracefully I might say, and you're going to notice a mural on the left of the Lady of Hope, or at least that's what I'm going to call her, and uh, then there's a truck right over here with ivy growing over, and you'll never guess what's inside. Okay, fine, you guessed it, it was artifacts and you know it's on the ground, but that's only probably because I told you in the bottom left corner. The next artifact can be found on the set of the Karate Kid, aka the Dojo, so if you make your way to the back over here, there is a bulletin board with the note on the uh, bulletin board. Now people aren't the only ones that are working out in this room, there's also a workbench in the back office, so if you go to the left over here, you'll find workbench number two. Alright, now you want to head across the street, and let me say to be weary of all the trip mines, there is a bunch in this area, so I would clear out all the trip mines first, and then start looting, but the next trading card is right here on the shelf to the left. Okay, artifact number 7 can be found in this back hallway area, and it's going to be again on another bulletin board right here to the right. Now this artifact is also going to double as the safe combination clue, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover that right now, which is located in the room to the left right over here. Now the combination is 550133 that you can get from paying attention to that writing on the bathroom wall. Now once you go ahead and plug in that combination, you will have all the collectibles for the Capitol Hill subchapter, and now we can move on to the next subchapter, which is channel 13. Now this subchapter only has two collectibles, but hey, I'm not complaining. So once you make your way to the TV station and you head up to the second floor, you'll have this part where you have to uh, climb on the outside of the building. Once you do so, then make your way to the directly to the back office uh, to the right over here and you'll find the trading card that is on the desk. For the second collectible, go to the top floor, which is the third floor, and then head to the back left office where you'll find the artifact on top of the couch. Alright, let's move on to the next subchapter, which is called Tunnels, and it's definitely the creepiest of Chapter 2. So, after you make your way past a few different rooms and you fight this uh, wide open fight in a giant red area, you're going to find this subway car and you'll have to crawl all the way to the end, where you'll find the first artifact over here on the left side of the wall. After that, you'll get to an area where you'll see a red dim coming from a different room. Before you go in there, then you'll go to the left of this subway car, and on this pile of trash, there is actually a trading card. It's a little tough to find, but it'll actually pop up if you just stand in that area. Okay, the next one is the workbench, so once you go in that room with the red dim light, make your way up to the top floor, and inside of this room, there is a workbench on this back wall. Eventually you'll get to a part where you'll have to kill a new kind of enemy called a shambler and when you do kill one of them there's going to be a journal entry icon that will pop up over top of the dead body. Alright now you'll get to a hallway that you'll be able to take a right and go into this room where you can jump the desk, head to the back of this gate area and then there's going to be a trading card on this desk to the right of the computer. 
Now, if you keep going down this hallway and then to the right, there's going to be a break room that's actually going to have three artifacts. The first one, artifact number two, it can be found on this table in the back of the room. And once you look at that, then you can head across to the other side of the room where there's a microwave with a little wooden doll of the Lady of Hope, like we were calling it before. So once you pick up that, then there's only one more artifact in this room, and it's going to be located inside of the vending machine. So you have to break out the glass, and then it's on a soda can that will have a clue for a code to a door. All right, once you make your way to the end of the mission, you're going to start to see a little bit of natural sunlight coming through, and there's all these subway cars piled up. On the left side, there's a subway car that you can crawl underneath, and then you'll find a trading card inside of this suitcase once you get inside of the train car. So for this last collectible, I'm actually looking down at the train car that you crawl underneath. So if you hop up here on this ledge and go into this blue and yellow subcar, then on the right side, there is a artifact number five that is taped to the wall. All right, continuing on with chapter two, the never ending chapter, the next submission is called the theater. And so there's only five collectibles and it's pretty quick and easy. So the first one is the artifact. You can find this on the green crate right here at the uh, very entrance of the theater. So once you pick that up, then head directly to your right where there's gonna be a display case. Uh, I break the wrong one first, but it's the one on the right and you can break it and then you'll see the trading card on the bottom of that display case. Once you grab that, then head upstairs and then go past the bar and there's going to be an area straight on and then to the right where you ha it'll be a dead end and you'll find a trading card on the ground right here. After grabbing that, then turn around and head back towards the bar and then there's going to be an area to the right where there's a balcony and so on the left of the balcony there's a table with the next artifact right there. For the next artifact, open up the door that's to the right of the bar and then head into this yellow door and then you're going to find a radio on this desk. On top of that will be the artifact number three. Okay, and for the final artifact of this submission, head into the actual theater room itself and then hop up on the stage where you're going to find the next collectible on top of this uh, black cargo crate right here. All right, this is not a drill. We are in the final submission of chapter two, the birthday gift. It's probably my favorite mission of the entire game. It's the sweetest one for sure. And it has five collectibles. The first one is a journal entry. So if you walk up to this sign right here in front of this giraffe and go ahead and log it into your journal. For the next one, go to the room that has a bunch of elephant skeletons and then make your way to the back right of the room and you'll find the next trading card on this bench over here. For the third collectible, go upstairs, and when you get to the room with a bunch of different colored basketballs, head over to these two benches right here where you can get the next journal entry just by interacting with the bench. The fourth collectible, which is trading card number two, can be found in the room just to the right of Bambi's dad over here by the bench, and it's going to be on the ground right here. And now, the moment that we've all been waiting for, the final collectible for chapter two. So when you get to the area with no light, go over here and introduce yourself to my friend Timothy and pick up the piece of paper for artifact number one. Once you do this, you'll be 100% complete with chapter two. This chapter was an insane amount of work to find all of these and get all the footage. So thank you guys so much for watching and you can count on me uploading chapter three's video really, really soon. That's everything for this video and I hope that you have an amazing day. My name is Absalom and I hope to see you in my next video.